Grandpa Farnham telling a story about moving to California. Well, a little here about our first uh, trip when we first came out to California. They was uh, Stella and I, and Pershing was a baby, and Irene and uh, our mother. And we then this old T model Ford loaded down to the brim, had a big old trunk on the rack on the back, and uh, quilts piled up in the back seat about a foot and a half high, and the two bed, big bed rolls on each side, and the suitcases on each side of the radiator. So we got over to this white mountain over there at Roswell, and uh, this old Ford, it slowed down to a snail's pace and finally stopped, and uh, there's a Mexican come along, and uh, one of us was driving, the rest pushing this Mexican, he put his uh, rope on the saddle horn and to the old uh, radiator cap and happened to pull us up this mountain. And then, uh, I don't I don't know if I'm going to get much on there, then uh, over there at the river, Colorado River, why well, Mama wanted to get across the river that night, and then when we got across, there's a big bunch of chug holes in the road. Oh, they was uh, terrible chug holes, and uh, so uh, she was uh, carrying the lantern on me to drive. Well, I was afraid she'd fall down and I'd run over her, so she got out and told me to take that lantern. She'd show me how to drive, and uh, so uh, she come a uh, rearing up behind me in that car, and I got in a run, and I was afraid I was going to fall down, and she was going to run over me, and... Uh, so I'll tell you, I got out of the road and let her have the thing to herself, and she really showed me how to drive there a few minutes, I'll tell you. But anyway, we got on over there at uh, Blythe and camped out, and uh, so we had it pretty good over there fishing and uh, getting fish out of the guy's uh, fish trap over there, and finally why we went on down the river and I spent a little time down there, about a week, you know. Trip from Portales, New Mexico, to California. Uh, Stella and I traded a bunch of chickens to Gertrude and Boris McCowan for this year, old T-model 19 and 15 Ford. Uh, this Ford had the uh, an unusual thing about it. It had a white tread, which uh, very few people would believe until you uh, got a stick and measured it for them. They made a few of these white tread uh, uh, cars at that time so they would fit the old uh, timey wagon tracks, you know, when the roads wasn't so good. And I had ordered license uh, for this old car, but they never did catch up with me. And we got ready to go to California. Why, Oakley let me have uh, his license off of his Ford, and uh, he also let me have his top, which was a good top. We didn't have no top. And we put his top on there and his license. And uh, Mama, she bought uh, some new tires and... Uh, one unusual thing to us was that when we got to uh, California, we still had New Mexico air in them tars. And I was used to having a flat about every few miles, so that is uh, something for us to think about, to carry some air that far without uh, running out. But a short time, well, that was quite a while after I'd been in California, I traded this old car off to a guy, and uh, so... Uh, a couple of three months later, them license caught up with me, and I went down and took them license to him. And he looked at me first like he thought I was a crook, but he kept looking me over, and he decided that I was honest. So I don't know what he done with the license. He he took them license and never said anything about it. Uh, this old car was really loaded down. Uh, we take and put banisters on both sides of the running boards and. That was all filled in with cooking utensils and first one thing and another. And Oakley, he killed a beef and he gave us that beef and we had that stored away in there. And uh, we had a bunch of bedding and had that stacked up in the quilts are stacked up in the back seat about a foot and a half high. And we had mattresses in our beds and these two big bed rolls. 
one for us and uh, one for Mom and Irene, and they went up on top of that on the uh, sides of the car, had to tie them on. And when you got in and out, why well, you had to climb over these beds, of course. And then on the rear end, I had a rack, and we had a great big trunk. And on top of this trunk, we had a wash tub where we carried dirty clothes and baby clothes and one thing or another. And there was two big suitcases across the front of the car, across the radiator there. And uh, that was uh, quite a load there. Uh, the first day, we made 90 miles. That was down to Roswell, New Mexico, and we thought we'd done very good. We didn't start off too early, and Mama, uh, she wanted me to drive around and look for a place to stay. It is real cold. I think she is a real good manager. I don't know if we'd have made it or not without her. But anyway, while we run on to a vacant house, and she went over and talked to the woman next door. And this woman let her have that the house for 50 cents that night, and we slept in that house. The next morning, of course, we had a little trouble getting started. Always had to jack up a hind wheel and heat water and uh, before you could get this old car cranked. And uh, so we had to heat the brick. We had a bunch of brick. We'd always heat them up and uh, put them down in the bottom of the car for Mama to put her feet on. Our next stop was San Patricia, New Mexico, where our sister Jessie used to teach school at. She stayed with a Spanish family there, and uh, uh, from Roswell to San Patricia, we had to go up this, uh, what they call the White Mountain. And this old Ford, it uh, got slower and slower, and it finally gave up the ghost on the way up this mountain there. And we was trying to push it, you know, one to drive and the rest of us are pushing and there's a Mexican come along and horseback. So he put his uh, rope on the saddle horn and tied onto the old car and he'd go along pulling this old car and the rest of us are pushing. So that is quite a deal, uh, getting up this mountain. Uh, the name of the people there at San Patricia, where Jesse taught school, and also where we stayed all night that night, their name was uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, between San Patricio and El Paso, we came upon a big sand bed where they was working on the road. And they had a team of horses there where they had to tow everybody through this sand. It must have been a quarter of a mile through there, and the people would line up and take turns being towed through. And uh, there was one guy, he drove up there in a great big Cadillac, looked like he had a lot of money, and he didn't want to wait his turn. So he pulled out around everybody, and he was going to show us how to get through that sand. Well, he got out there not very many yards, and he got stuck clear up to the bed of the car. And so this guy, uh, that was towing him across, he just ignored him, left him out there. He really did raise cane. He pulled through a whole bunch of cars after that guy's turn, so I guess he learned a good lesson there. Our next stop was at a ghost town on our way down to El Paso there, and uh, there wasn't nobody lived in this town, and we didn't have no trouble finding a house because all you had to do was just drive up and down the street and pick out the house that you wanted to stay in. From there, we made it into El Paso, Texas. Irene, she was greatly impressed about the uh, size of the town there in El Paso. We bought uh, gas there, and I was asked about the road, and this guy told us to uh, go out there a ways and make a turn, turn to the left out there, and then go till we run into a brick wall. Well, after we left El Paso, we had a little pavement there, and that's the first pavement that this old car had ever seen before. And we got up on that pavement and get to going about 35 miles an hour. And them wheels, of course, they was all loose, and that old car would get to shimmying, and we didn't know what was the matter. That thing would darn near throw you out of the car. So I finally stopped and went over to a garage, and this guy, he told me what the trouble was. He said, them there tires are just loose on there. Why, that is the reason. It took us about uh, two more days to get on up to Rincon, New Mexico. The road went a lot different them days, and we went around through some mountains there, so you don't go very far in a 
T model Ford in the mountains. Some of them small mountains is pretty big them days for an old T model Ford. So we uh, finally reached Rincon, New Mexico. When we got to Rincon, I think it was a little bit before night, and Mama, she went and phoned uh, Georgie and Ed up at Hot Springs, and uh, they came down. The road was uh, mountainous, and we figured we couldn't make it up there. I don't remember just how far it was. But they got down there, and so Stella and Irene and Georgie, they went down the railroad track and uh, picked up some coal there, and... Uh, we cooked a steak. By this, cooked some of this steak that we uh, brought from New Mexico with some of this beef that Oakley uh, killed over there. And I remember one uh, little incident. Mama cooked this year steak in a Dutch oven. This little old stove in this uh, uh, camp house we had had a Dutch oven. So that's where she cooked the steak. And another incident, Georgia Lee, she had the earache there. And I remember about Ed Jones blowing uh, smoke in her ear there. Uh, when we left uh, Rincon, well, Ed Jones, he went with us quite a few miles out there to show us a dirt road that, to cut across to Deming, New Mexico. And uh, that's where we uh, stayed all night on our next uh, night on our trip. When we uh, got ready to leave Deming, why, the fan belt kept running off this old car and... Uh, I had to get a stick and put a guide on there, and I had to keep that on there the rest of the trip, keep this uh, fan belt from running off with us all the time, running off. And uh, I, the next night, well, we made it over to Lordsburg, New Mexico. Uh, Lordsburg, New Mexico was one of about the coldest places that uh, we had on the trip, I think. We always called it Iceberg after that, and we sure liked to froze out. And we had to buy a cord of wood, and next morning, why, we couldn't crank this old car. We cranked up, jacked up the hind wheel, and poured in hot water, and done everything else, but it was about noon before we ever got this old car started. Now, Mama always inquired about the roads on this trip and to be sure to take the best road and the roads with the best, with the smallest hills. And so uh, she found out we needed to go uh, south towards the Mexican border, and that uh, we went down to a town called uh, Douglas. That's an old army camp down there. And uh, when we got to Douglas, why uh, they had a camp there for tourists and. Uh, we rented one of these Indian teepees there. I remember we had to sleep with their feet to the center. And uh, when we was cooking breakfast, they had a kind of a kitchen place there in this camp and where you'd put in a quarter and it'd turn the gas on for a certain period of time. And I remember when we was getting uh, our meals over there, while somebody, somebody else had a... Uh, a little gas left over, you know, if they had to put in another quarter and didn't use it all, why we'd run over with our coffee pot or pan or set it on there and use the rest of that there gas up. Uh, the next stop we made after we left uh, Douglas was a, a little railroad siding. They was a uh, little bitty teeny depot there, and it was uh, real cold, and... Uh, Mama, she had quite a time talking this guy into letting us sleep in the depot, but she finally got the best of him. She talked him down because we had Pershing, you know, as a baby and all, and uh, he let us sleep in this year, in this year depot, and uh, this year uh, uh, where we slept was only about three or four feet from where the train went along, and it would feel like it was about to raise you out of the bed when one of them freight trains would come along. So after this, why, we slept out every night, and uh, we had a wagon sheet, and we'd uh, fit that up against the side of the car and slope it down. Well, that is where uh, Mom and Irene slept in there. And I took an axe and cut uh, both sides of the front seat down so I could lean it back. And uh, that is where... Uh, me and Stella slept. That is a real palace in there because that made a really made a bed. We used to take and hang the lantern up in there and go to bed and we was out of the rain. We thought that was uh, really something fine to be able to do that. I put a hook and eye on this year seat that I chopped down so I could snap it back up and uh, 
ago, that they worked out pretty good. Uh, if you'd cut the back seat of a car down now, like I did on that one, and bend it back and forth about uh, three or four days, why well, it'd break off because the metal ain't no good anymore like it used to be. Uh, the next uh, place we came to was uh, Disney, Arizona. Uh, they was quite a mountain there. I think that was the highest we went. I remember that uh, Mama had a little trouble uh, breathing up there on account of the high altitude, so she didn't know uh, what was the cause of it. Now, we stopped at the foot of the mountain there to get gas, and we asked the man about this uh, mountain. We'd been hearing about it, and he told us that we'd go up a thousand feet in a mile. So we was really looking for a hill there. Didn't know whether we was going to make it or not. But uh, when we was going through this town, we was going up the hill all the time and didn't know it. So we stopped and rested the car up this hill a ways. And uh, there was a man up there had a brand new car. And uh, so he was stalled up there and he thought there was something terrible. He said he knew there wasn't nothing wrong with his car, but he didn't know that he was climbing this hill, I guess. So... Uh, he had to go to a garage, but we went right on by him, and uh, pretty soon we got out to the edge of the town, and we looked up, and I, it wasn't but just, oh, I don't know, about four or five hundred yards to the top of the hill, and so we just scooted right on up the hill and low, and made it up there pretty good. Uh, after we left uh, Disney, Arizona, well, we had to go down to quite a mountain there. And I never had been used to driving in the mountains, you know, so I used my brakes too much and burnt the brakes off. Well, then I got to using the reverse, and I finally burnt it all off, and my hair was sticking straight up, and I was pretty much just scared. And uh, Mama told me to run the thing into the side of the mountain, but I it was going a little too fast. I told Irene to jump out and throw some rocks under the wheel, and uh, so finally we got to a place where this... Uh, road was a little bit more level and I got to rubbing the side of the mountain finally got it slowed down and we stopped there. As a man come by while we had stopped there and he wanted to ask us what our trouble was and we told him our brakes and all reversed and everything was all burnt off of the car and he told me just to put the car in low and I could make it on down the mountain. Well the worst part of the grade was over so we made it down the mountain okay. Uh, we came on down to where there was a little town down at the foot of the mountains there and uh, stayed all night. And next morning, why, we put the brakes on the car. Uh, the next place we arrived was uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, we looked for some people that uh, Mama knew there, but we couldn't find them. And uh, we was going right down the main street of Phoenix there in Arizona and... Uh, this old fan belt, it finally come off and flew around in there and hit the hood, and I guess I killed the car, but I thought it had blowed out, and we thought that was the end of our journey right there. Uh, we was looking for work, and somebody told us to go over to Glendale. Well, we went over there, but we didn't find any work over there, and somebody told us to go back to uh, Temple, which was not very far away. And the only work we could find was uh, picking cotton. So this uh, man there had a lot of cotton. He gave us a job, and uh, we moved into a little tent. He had a row of little tents there, and that's where we lived in one of them little tents. And uh, we picked cotton for this man there for, oh, maybe a week, I don't know, for... and. Uh, Person, he, I remember that is the first time he ever tried to say anything. He tried to say chicken because these chickens was always getting in the tent and uh, we'd have to run them out and holler at the chicken. So he's trying to say chicken, but he couldn't quite make it. And uh, so uh, we was there on uh, Christmas Day at this place and uh, we was picking cotton down there one time out of this long staple cotton. And you had to bend them stalks over. They was about six, seven feet high, and you'd bend them over. But when you turn them loose, they'd come back, you know, like a bow and an arrow. And uh, I was right behind Irene, and she turned one of them stalks loose. And uh, that stalk come back, one of them green bows on there hit me in the eye, and like, just about knocked me out. I could see stars and everything else. Uh, while we was at this place picking cotton, I made a few dollars there, and I told this man I want to put some uh, oversized fists in this old car. 
Uh, this man, he brought me out some oversized pistons, but they was, uh, they was too uh, small. They uh, had to be bigger than that yet, so he went back, couldn't get any bigger ones, but he got me some tractor pistons, and I put them in there. One of them was a little bit tight. It's the one that hadn't froze up, but uh, it worked in all right, though. Uh, these air pistons and uh, cost me $13. Uh, Mom and Irene went down the road there to uh, get some milk for Pershing, and they passed an olive tree down there, and Mama tasted one of those uh, olives, and uh, she seen the man there. She asked him if she could get a few of them to take back to camp to uh, play a trick on some of us back there, and so when she got back, why, she gave me uh, one of them uh, olives, you know, and she had a hard time keeping her face straight while I was chewing on that olive. I tell you, that sure was some flavor. <laughs> uh, here in Phoenix, and there Phoenix was the first time in any of us had ever seen any oranges growing on a tree. And Mama, she wanted to get a few of them oranges, and uh, she went and seen the lady, and the lady told her she would uh, clip her off a few, but Mama wanted to pick them herself, so... Uh, she did. She picked off a few while the lady was clipping, and she sent those uh, oranges to Georgia. Uh, when we left Phoenix, why, we come out to a little town, just, uh, oh, not many miles this side of Phoenix. That's where the road forks there. One of these roads went to Yuma, and uh, and the other one uh, went on what they call a blind cutoff. And we had to look at them roads a long time before we could figure which one to take. I think Mama finally decided that and uh, we would try the Blythe Cutoff. This man told us we uh, took plenty of water with us and bought some new canteens and filled them with water and we broke down out there, we'd be towed in. But otherwise, why, we'd just be stalled out there. And this, uh, at Yassahampa, they told a story there about uh, if you drank any of that water there at uh, Yassahampa, why, you never would tell the truth anymore. Uh, our next stop was over at a place called Vicksburg, there in Arizona. And uh, we drove up there, and uh, as soon as I drove up this little old place, I seen a railroad uh, outfit there. It looked like a bridge gang or something, so I told them I was going to try to get a job there. And so I asked him where the boss was, and they said he was standing down there in the door of one of them cars. And I went down there, and he gave me a job. and. Uh, so we went out to look for a place to stay, and uh, we were looking around. We found an old schoolhouse out to the edge of town had a lot of cotton seed in it, so we decided to camp there, and so we did. And uh, we kind of taken that place over there, and we slept on them cotton seed there, and there's some bums come in. They tried to run us out of there, said we took over their bed there, and... Uh, so uh, one morning there, there's uh, finally some uh, Mexicans come by there, and they had to wait a week for some car parts from uh, Los Angeles. So one morning, why we always cook flapjacks, and uh, so I told him that was pretty good. And we had flapjacks, and these Mexicans had a Dutch oven. They'd made themselves some hot biscuits, and I felt kind of funny. I didn't know which one of us was a Mexican there for a while. And I worked for this uh, bridge gang outfit there, I think about a week and a half, something like that. And I had to board down there in, the, in order to get a job. And I used to slip pieces of cake in my pocket and take them to Pershing there. And uh, so I think this place where we was camped up there was kind of a bum's headquarter because they kept coming up there, you know, begging for so much that I finally had to run them off, and this year, uh, Bridge Gang, they was going to move, you know, and uh, that they was going the opposite direction. This man told me if I wanted to drive back over there, you know, I could still work, but we was going the other way, so uh, we left there and uh, come on to Blythe. Uh, when we uh, got over to the Colorado River on our way to Blythe, why, well, you had to cross the river there on a barge. They charge you two and a half to uh, take your car across the river there. I remember uh, they just had just an old flat barge, and they had a two-before nailed along the edge, and I had to drive right up against that two-before. They told us there about a car or two drove off in the river, so that kind of made my hair stand up a little bit there. And uh, But uh, Mama, she wanted to go on across. We wanted to wait till morning, but she was anxious to get into California, so we were the last one. This guy, he took us on across. 
Or when we got across this river there, why, there was a great big dump thrown up. It is a brand new road, and I tell you, that was full of chug holes like nobody's business. And it was really something. It had got dark on us, and these old magnet lights, they wasn't no good to see out ahead with. So uh, uh, Mama told me to uh, drive the car, and she'd take this lantern and walk ahead. And this year place was about, oh, maybe a quarter of a mile long, a terrible road, and uh, so she was walking on, and I was kind of standing behind this car, afraid I'd run over, you know, and all them chug holes, so she kind of got peeved up and come back and told me to take that lantern, and she'd show me how to drive that car. So I took this lantern and started on down the road, and boy, here she comes, <laughs> coming right on down in behind me, and she was scared the water out of me. I'd run into them chug holes, and she was about to run over me. And finally, I just left the road and let her have it. And that, uh, we found a place to camp after we got across the river there. And the uh, next day I went down there, I seen an outfit down there making a levee on the Colorado River, and I wanted to get some work there for a little while. And this man told me, that they were going to move on down the river into a place called Palo Verde, and if I wanted to wait and come on down there, why, well, he'd give me a job when I got down there. So we just camped right there for about a week. And in the meantime, we met a Swede there that was camped out on the river for his health. And he used to come over to the camp, and uh, he'd play with Pershing at night there in the camp bar, and he'd hold him up, you know, and it'd be moonlight, and he'd say, see the moon, see the moon? And he told Mama that he was fishing over there in the river, and they got to talking about fish, and she got to talking about salmon. He said he was going to catch her a salmon. So, uh, we met this same Swede in a cotton patch up in Porterville, and that was after we had lived in Corona several years, and then we moved to Porterville. Uh, we went on down to uh, Palo Verde, and I started to work down there for this outfit, driving four mules in Fresno, where they were working on that there levee there, and boy, it sure was cold. We had camped out there, and person, he had the colic, and Irene and Stella and Mama, they had to go out and haul in wood, you know, to build a bar there to keep him warm, and I tell you, he like to froze out there. And another little incident there down on that levee was a place where uh, it was real steep going up over a canal there, and this board, you'd get it cranked and start up over there, and the thing would stop, and I'd back down and jack up a wheel, and I'd jack the wheel up why he'd get gas in the carburetor, and I don't know what, how many times I ever tried that before I found out I didn't have enough gas in the car to get over that bump there. If you turned one of them T-Model Fords around and backed up the hill, why, you wouldn't run out of gasoline. It'd feed the carburetor. Uh, they'd had a flood down there on the Colorado River, and that's where we was building that dike up down there, and we visited some little houses, little shacks around there, and these people had left out, and they'd just uh, left their dishes sitting right on the table. Uh, we was talking to a man down there about picking lemons, and he'd been on down here in this part of California, and uh, he told us, uh, he advised us that we ought to just turn right around and go back to New Mexico. And Mama asked him if uh, there wasn't any lemons or fruit to pick out there, and if there wasn't a lot of fruit work. And he said, oh, he said, they're picking a few uh, lemons out there and painting them yellow and selling them. Uh, while we were at Palo Verde there, there was a man that had to, uh, a big uh, seam, you know, stretched out across one of those uh, sloughs there, and he'd go down there every morning and uh, go out in the boat and take these fish out of his nets, you know, and they were the kind of a fish, he didn't like them or didn't want them, I guess they wouldn't sell, they'd call them buffalo fish, and he'd just sling them fish out on the bank. I thought, I think Mama asked him about getting the fish, and so he'd just sling them fish out there, and so we really eat the fish there, got all the fish we wanted, and Mama made a net and uh, put it down there, and she used to put a little food in it, and uh, she used to catch a lot of fish in that net, and we'd eat them too. Uh, after we left Palo Verde and uh, started on down this way, while we, uh, stayed with a cowboy. We camped out there, and he told us uh, about Desert Center down there. 
And he said that man down there at run that filling station at Desert Center was selling water. And he told us not to pay for any water down there. But anyway, you had to buy gas there at Desert Center because you couldn't make it across there. And that was a real sandy road. And, and when you left, I...